The title is on the line. We're in Miami live on Paramount Plus. Get comfortable on a Friday night. We have a very special event. Five rounds inside of the Jaula between David Martinez and Axel Osuna. The wait is over. The fighters made their weight. They're healthy and ready to go. And looking to make history. Build a legacy. Enter the Jaula if you will. That is where it humbles anyone. Once you walk through that door, you better be ready. Anything can happen. David Martinez has looked untouchable, but will he remain that way against his toughest opposition to date? Axel Osuna, who hit the reset button after a defeat in June of last year to Reyes Junior Cortez, and he has moved up a class and he feels comfortable. But David Martinez, we saw him win the Bantamweight tournament in May of last year, defend his title in May of this year, and now he looks to do it again. This is as big as it gets for Combate Global. These are two world-class fighters. Aitana Alvarez, Jillian Null, also a very interesting fight. But it all begins in the featherweight division. Miguel Lugo getting a victory the last time we saw him out of Yuma, Arizona. He is going to fight the undefeated, the Cuban problem, Yadier Del Valle. Fight night on a Friday is about to begin. Let's make it official and hand it off to Lupe Contreras. Entrando a la jaula, Miguel Lugo. Miguel Lugo, background in wrestling. Uh, he does consider himself a striker, but he does have a nice foundation here. Rodolfo has been training for eight years. And we, we talked about Yuma, Arizona. That area, when you get on both sides of the border, a hotbed for mixed martial arts. Incredible fighter. His only loss came by the hands of Chris Boasso. And even that fight, I was just watching it right now, it could be a little touchy because of that clinch work. There was a knee. It almost hit him like in the midsection. It seems that way. But either way, the last time we saw him inside La Jaula, he pulled off a submission victory with just six seconds left in the first round. This guy's a stud. What about his opponent? He's unbeaten. Here is Lupe Contreras with the introduction. Su contrario, Yadier del Valle. The Cuban problem who started MMA in his home country, now based out of Houston, Texas. Look at that beautiful flag. Did I tell you about the Cuban flag, the first to use that <laughs> triangle? Yeah, I sure yeah. I did. I've done many times. Uh, when he was a kid, he was a bit of a, an introvert. Would get into fights, and now he uses it for professional ranks. And Rodolfo, 3-0 and in his combate debut. That's a good record, but now can he do it in the big time? I've been looking forward to his debut. He was scheduled to compete a couple of months ago, a couple of weeks ago. However, for, for unforeseen circumstances, he's here today. Very exciting fighter. Look for the, the left hook. He has great cardio and an aggressive fighter. This guy is also a savage. When you put two and two together, Styles makes matchups. We're on for a good fight here tonight. Uh, this is going to be in the featherweight, 145 pounds. Both guys hit the weight. Both very young. Lugo just one year, the senior. Two-inch height advantage, all even on the reach. Both guys like to finish fights. Lugo has finished both his victories. Del Valle has finished two of his three victories. A perfect 3-0. We're ready for our first fight. We're live. Let's go to Lupe. Este duelo, tres vueltas, división peso pluma, that's about three rounds. In the featherweight division, los jueces son the judges are Ricardo Celis, Mark Streisand y James Lazaro. Presentando la esquina azul, vestido de rojo, presenting the blue corner, wearing red. Su peso oficial, 145 libras y tres cuartos, his official weight, 145 and three quarter pounds. Entra por cuarta vez a la jaula con dos victorias y una derrota. He enters la jaula for the fourth time as a pro, with two victories against one defeat. Fighting out of Yuma, Arizona, Miguel Mikey Lugo. Su oponente en la esquina roja, vestido de blanco, is opponent in the red corner, wearing white. Sobre la báscula, marcó un peso oficial de 145 libras y media on the scale. He registered an official 145 and one half pounds. Esta noche, entra a la jaula y pone en juego su récord invicto de tres combates profesionales. Tonight, he enters la jaula and puts on the line his undefeated 3-0 record. De Ciego de Ávila, Cuba. And now fighting out of Houston, Texas. The Cuban problem. Yadier del Valle. 
el referee, Brian Miner. Brian Miner, the third inside La Jaula. Jump went over the rules. Fight hard, keep it clean. Want to touch club, do it now. You just did. Return back to the corners, please. Here we go, Miguel Lugo. Coming off a victory over Jose Ferreri just in August 19th of this year. Six seconds away from the end of the first round. You ready? You ready? Now he's looking to build off of that against an undefeated Yadier Del Valle, but we'll get to know about the Cuban problem here shortly. See if he is the real deal, Holyfield. Look off for that left hook, Max, from Yadier. He has a very strong one coming at you. Very aggressive fighter. So is uh, Miguel as well. So this should be for a fun fight. But Miguel, Miguel does have that strong background in the ground game. Look at that, that's that calf kick, calf kick from Yadir. Del Valle in the white, and he's been very active. No hesitation whatsoever from Del Valle as he hits the Jaula for the first time. Well, they're feeling out of the process. He needs to check those kicks. Was not checking them. And Lugo comes into tight quarters oh. and he gets a couple wallops from Del Valle. Seven years ago, started to train at Gracie Bada, West Chase in Houston, Texas, Del Valle, who, uh, by the way, oh. runs a company selling Cuban food, which we approve, and I'm sure the folks in Houston approve of as well. You know, it's a combination again, Del Valle. Very active early on, Rodolfo. Absolutely. Oh! Oh, took wow. that lead leg yeah. out. See, he wasn't checking those kicks. Again. He, again, he, it's already about 3-4 that he has not checked. You have to check those. Another oh, one. Oh, he's going back to back. Del yeah. Valle looking very oh, sharp. Did you see that leg, how it just, oh. How many, you can't take a lot of those for a little fall. You can't. Nothing behind that kick from Lugo. It's going to come a time that it's going to see. He's already switched. Yeah, he switched because he felt that pain. From that back leg, the, <laughs> he was a lead at that point. It's interesting to see Del Valle because he's Cuban. When you fit the Cuban fighters, you immediately think wrestling, wrestling right. judo. He does have a background in judo, and he has prioritized jiu-jitsu. We haven't seen any of that right now, and he looks really good. He looks like a stand-up fighter. Absolutely, but those kicks are telling a different tale here right now in this fight from Yadir. I mean, they're coming with so much power. And another one. You're going to see at the end of this round that hamstring, that calf area, sure a little, uh, a little reddish. It was interesting that. Oh, oh just, it hurt him in the midsection. Out of win. Lugo fighting for survival here. He'll take it to the ground, but a good guillotine attempt already from Del Valle, who is answering every question thus far. Yeah, Del Valle does have a submission victory. His but last fight, no? Well, no, it was uh, December 2019, yep. his second to last that. fight. But Lugo, Lugo does have jiu-jitsu, but he may be, I don't no, see No, his arm's moving, he's trying to take uh, out. I can see from this angle here, I don't know where his head is positioned. We it don't seems know. like a guillotine, but I, so hard from this position to see. Brian Miner there he's a conversation, out. but now Del Valle gets the back. Good work by Lugo. Absolutely, he has that strong base in jiu-jitsu. He knows how to get out of these tough situations. And as you see, he's gonna put this up, that arm out, now from the clinch work, but he still needs to rip that right arm, because Del Valle could just put all his weight, he could put it to sleep oh if he has it tight. I can't see it from this angle, but if he has that, he oh, ripped it up. He's out. Okay. Some blood between the eyebrows of Del Valle, and for the first time, really, Lugo can be the offense here. And now he's laying in some elbow shots, some fists. Great work, bro, from Del Valle to get right back on his feet, taking the fight to the stand-up. Third fight for Lugo in combate, one and one in his previous two. First round submission, rear naked choke over Jose Ferretti, and as Rodolfo touched on, it lost to Christopher Boasso in August of last year, which was a first round TKO. Good stuff, though, from Lugo in that clinch work. See how he's always moving around his hands. He has a lot of effectiveness in it. Landing in some elbows when he switches. Oh, Del Valle sneaking in some punches. Single leg there by Lugo. It's into the guard. Into the guard. Under a minute to go here, round one. You can see underneath at, those hamstrings, it was red and I told bumpy. You. I told you. One both legs. Is, both. That's why you have to keep switching. But there you, you see the right switching. one's got the worst of it. He did switch, and then Del Valle proceeded to hit the left one. It's that referee angle that we're getting, camera angle. 
Well, this is where Del Valle is going to have to show off his uh, training. He's been training with Pedro Marino, a jiu-jitsu champion there in Houston. Blue belt in jiu-jitsu now. Del Valle now on the bottom. Now he's got the mount. Yeah, Listen, he's got the full mount. Last time, he finished off with the point and literally with seconds left in the first round. Ten Could seconds. Be a Looking to do it again. Could it be a repeat, Max? Del Valle is in defense mode. It's just survived this round. A complete 180 in this fight. Oh. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what the judges think. And a, remember, a reminder, we have open scoring here. How do they rate the first three and a half minutes from that man, Del Valle, or is the last 90 seconds? Yeah, let's take a Good look, enough. Max. Let's take a look, Max, at some of the highlights for that first round. They're going to see if they, he actually taps. Huh. I would imagine this is Lugo. Right, it, would, it had been in that guillotine position. But there was lots of exchanges. Lugo took this fight to the ground. There it is. That's where Del Valle attempted that guillotine. But I don't see that arm. Well, the referee's in the way. Ah, couldn't quite see from there. We are ready here for the second round, and there was a discussion of whether Lugo tapped uh, underneath of that guillotine joke. After seeing that replay, it did. It's more like his hand was just hanging around, but he was able to compose himself. Right, let's take a look here what happens in the second round, Max. Again, with the kicks from Del Valle. It was working where he's just breaking him down. Great spinning back fist, and now exchanging back and forth. Lugo oh, needs to protect uppercut. himself. Lugo backing out. Del Valle using the break between rounds to his benefit. Del Valle, once he picks up that pace, there's no way of stopping him. You got to get him in the clinch, which is Lugo here trying to take advantage of this position. Maybe he could switch the levels, take the fight to the ground. And look at the open scoring, Max. Lugo taking that first round. Surprising, surprised by that. I'm a little bit. Yeah. If you were to split, if you were to split that that first round though, Lugo had the advantage towards the latter part of the round and then the opening. But it was a small but amount he, yeah, for Lugo. Yeah, it was. Uh, but all three judges saw it, yeah. and now Del Valle really has to put his foot on the pedal here in round two. And 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 Lugo did work from the ground, and but he didn't do much from there. It was more of that stand up and those kicks. Oh, body work there. He ah, fumbled Lugo it. Lugo got hit again. We saw that in the first round, and this time Del Valle has to deny the takedown attempt. He gets the back. Lugo does look hurt this time. I'm sure Del Valle is going to try to put both those legs in and wrap it around. Uh, Lugo's hurt. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if he's going to get out of this one. Del Valle is. An outpouring of punches, looking to improve to 4-0. Oh. A warning from the referee to defend himself. Yeah, he needs to protect himself. Now he may even get the mount, and he'll be in really deep, hot water. Lugo is in trouble here. Del Valle now get those hooks in. He flattens out Lugo. Del Valle flattens out Lugo. He's going to stop this fight. Something happened with Lugo. He got hurt and he never recovered. Del Valle shot out of a cannon in the second round. 4-0 in his MMA career. 1-0 with Combate Global. It was that body shot, Max. It was a body shot that turtled Lugo. And Del Valle was just unstoppable. And see how they're lifting up there, the tights? I want to see that replay again. There is the victor, and now we cannot wait. A beautiful fight by Del Valle as he improves to 4 0. We are back. The uh, plight of the Cuban fighter is something uh, that always amazes many. We'll get into it for Del Valle, but first, the official decision from Lupe Contreras.
Una serie de golpes sin respuesta obliga al referee Brian Miner a parar la contienda con un tiempo oficial de 2 minutos 4 segundos del segundo episodio. A series of unanswered blows obligates referee Brian Miner to stop this contest with an official time of 2 minutes 4 seconds of round number 2. Your winner, by way of TKO, el ganador por knockout técnico. Still undefeated, the Cuban problem, Yadier del Valle. There is Del Valle who moved to Mexico from Cuba at 17, started to train, kept building, found a home in the United States, and now is building a very nice resume. Can't wait to see him again. He was a very pleasantly surprising the way he handled Lugo. The wait was worth it, guys. What a stud. En mi primera pelea con Edgar Chaires, todo el mundo decía que iba a perder. Cerré la boca, fui, peleé, demostré, lo finalicé. Después vine y peleé con Ricky Scraps, que es muy buen UXero. Todo el mundo decía que me iba a someter. Fui, me paré, demostré, lo sometí. Después peleé con Bosco Boyer del Valle Flow. Hice exactamente lo mismo. Fui, me callé, demostré y lo finalicé en un round. En su momento, cuando peleé con Junior Cortés, todo el mundo decía que el equipo de él representaba mucho, que él era muy grande. Yo peleé, dimos tres rounds, dimos una pelea dura. Él me ganó, regresé al gimnasio, cerré la boca, no puse excusas, me puse a trabajar. Regreso con Max y todo el mundo decía que iba a pasar lo mismo conmigo. Fui, demostré, lo finalicé. Ahora con David, todo el mundo hablaba de su invicto, nadie hablaba de mí. Hice lo mismo, fui, trabajé, fuimos y lo finalizamos. Más que ganarle a él técnica, táctica, y en cuestión de cualidades, se le ganó anímicamente. Se le fue rompiendo tanto su voluntad como su físico y él poco a poco fue abandonando. Realmente ahí pasó algo que yo no esperaba. Yo no creía que el referee interfiriera y terminara la pelea. Que el referee interfiriera, yo creo que pues un poco más porque él ya no estaba trabajando o porque él realmente se quebró y se rindió más que porque yo estuviera trabajando. Look back at our opening bout, Miguel Lugo and Yadier del Valle. Uh, Miguel Lugo won the first round, although he took a licking as del Valle showing off his stand-up game, Rodolfo. Ah, those kicks. He Boom. just kept eating them over and over. He didn't check it. But then towards the end of that first round, he did take the fight to the ground. However, in this position, as you're seeing, he was caught what seemed like a guillotine. At one point, there was even some discussion if he had tapped, but no, he did not. He took the fight to the floor, to the feet again. And then Lugo followed up with some of his groundwork later on. But it was in the second round that it was these shots, especially towards the body, that turtled Lugo right about any second now should come about and Del Valle just shot out of a cannon max as he stated followed up and finished off Lugo in the ground by punches as you can see right there taking him to the floor the referee had seen enough Lugo wasn't doing anything to defend himself and that is it bienvenidos Yadir Del Valle to la jaula Great victory for this young man. Future looks bright for this kid, I must say. Sure does. Take a look at the stats, Matt. Very, a lot of output from Del Valle. Uh, doubling up there on Lugo. The takedown did keep Lugo in there, and he had a shot there at the end of the first round to finish it. He had Del Valle in trouble. But the great thing about Del Valle, and maybe he caught word of the fact that he lost the first round, he took care of business in round two very quickly. He was able to take his feet to the fight to the feet, capitalize on it, work that body, take it to the floor. That's it. That's all it is. Great victory for the young man. We'll hear from Lugo again soon, I am sure, and we'll certainly look forward to from Del Valle, who maintains his undefeated record. We'll be back.
There he is, Axel Osuna, who talked about his debut with Combate Global against Edgar Chaidez. He was a flyweight at the time. No one thought he could beat the heavily favored Chaidez. He did. A few fights later, he's here. And there's the champ, the Black Spartan, who has been thrown into the deep end of the pool many times, winning that Bantamweight tournament. But this will be his biggest test. Locked in from the fighting Martinez's there in uh, La Capital. Much more Combate Global coming your way. We'll have the welterweights next. Back here in Miami live. Up next, we are at 170 pounds. Another big fight coming your way. We saw Thajin last week victorious to stay unbeaten. Another welterweight putting his feather in a cap into the ring, looking to get noticed. But the number one, as for now, is Marcos Lloreda. He faces the challenge of the Ecuadorian, Ricardo Sendeno. We're ready for our next fight. Let's go to Lupe Contreras. Entrando a la jaula, Ricardo Centeno. Ricardo Sendeno training up in New York for this with Henzo Gracie, the 30-year-old, like so many in South America, starting with kickboxing. Then he looked to complete the platform, his portfolio, so to speak. Ecuadorian MMA is in its infancy, but he knows anytime he carries that flag, a chance to represent and show that it's coming along. And there's been some cop fighters coming out of that country that made their way to the big leagues. This man being one of them. Big opportunity for him. First time fighting in the United States. Su rival, Marcos Lloreda. Marcos Lloreda, the face of Freedom Fighters in Miami. Looking to wipe away the bad taste of his mouth from his last fight in July. He lost to Colin Lubert's TKO punch, punches in the second round. Prior to that, he was good enough to build a resume to be the number one welterweight. He is from Miami. His family is Spanish, and he carries the Spanish flag inside La Jaula. He looks like a different man in there since the last time we saw him against Colin Lubert. He said, I wasn't disciplined. I wasn't following my regimen. I've had a lot more cardio, more intensity into my fight camp. I wear that big C on my chest. I'm the captain of my team of freedom fighters. When my coaches aren't there, I'm the one that takes the lead. So he has to prove to himself why he is the captain against Ricardo Centeno here tonight. Yeah, Yoreda said people know that that last fight wasn't the Marcos that they know. Everyone says there's excuses, but I will tell you, I will not look like that again as we go cara a cara. Five inch reach advantage for Yoreda, two inches by the height. He is massive. We're ready. So is Lupe Contreras. Continuamos con mucha más acción. Tres vueltas, división peso welter. We continue with much more action. Three rounds in the welterweight division. Los jueces son, the judges are James Lazaro, Eliseo Rodriguez, y Ricardo Celis. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando la esquina azul, vestido de rojo, presenting the blue corner, wearing red, su peso oficial, 170 libras y un cuarto, his official weight, 170 and one quarter pounds. En 17 combates, mantiene un récord de 9 victorias y 8 derrotas. En 17 pro bouts, he maintains a record of 9 victories against 8 losses. Quito, Ecuador presente. Ricardo Centeno. Su rival en la esquina roja, vestido de negro, is opponent in the red corner, wearing black. Marcó un peso oficial de 170 libras y media. He registered an official 170 and one half pounds. Esta noche, entra la jaula en su vigésimo combate a nivel profesional, con 11 victorias y 8 derrotas tonight. He enters la jaula for the 20th time as a pro, with 11 victories against 8 losses. Repping the MIA, Miami, Florida. 
el conquistador, Marcos Lloreda. El referee, Brian Miner. Brian Miner, the third inside La Jaula. Gentlemen, two center. What are the rules? Fight hard, keep it clean. If you want to touch gloves, do it now. Good luck to you both. Marcos Lloreda, 11 and 8, his 20th bout as a professional against Ricardo Centeno. This is his 18th professional bout. You ready? You ready? Lloreda's first fight, 2013, coming on almost 10 year anniversary of being a professional mixed martial artist. Interesting, Marcos Lloreda in black, and we mentioned how he's, you mentioned how he's the captain of the Freedom Fighters. He says this is his 20th professional fight, his 26th fight overall that Manuel Lopez, the head coach there, has been in his corner for all of them. And that's something that, oh. Uh-oh, Centeno coming in hot. Oh, Centeno changing the pace here in his previous fight. He's more of the counter puncher, more of a patient fighter, but he's bringing everything here tonight against Loreda. And Max, to your point, nowadays, if you tend to go on a losing streak, you start to really contemplate and think about where you train. And some fighters tend to leave that camp because they say, maybe I can get something else. So that's something not as common, believe it or not, in MMA. Marcos Llorena put a lot of pressure on himself. He said, you will not see the lack of disciplined fighter. We hear it from fighters again, although Centeno continues to connect about how much you learn from a defeat. Well, Lloreda is putting that into effect. It wasn't that long ago, back in July. So far, we haven't seen the Marcos Lloreda that he would like us to see, but he is running into a buzzsaw yeah, in he's Centeno. Getting, he's getting clipped. There was some uppercuts and that just back and forth. Yeah, Lloreda needs to push the pace here. He's, Another one from Centeno. He's got Lloreda on the round. It's like the... Oh, spinning back elbow attempt from Lloreda. Lloreda's face is already marked up. Got to get that jab going. Nothing yeah. behind that reverse kick. Yeah, Lloreda's known for that flashiness. He needs to use those kicks, use that range to keep Centeno at the distance and then follow up with a combination. Centeno. Now, one thing I want to point, though, uh, Max, Centeno comes here as, as a bigger fighter, physically, if you, if you look at each other right here. Yeah, we saw Lloreda, six foot two, that long reach, but Centeno's getting inside, Jacked. having a ton of success. Yeah, he he looks like a proper, he looks like a 170 yeah. pounder supposed to look like. <laughs> Compact and powerful. Curious to see as if we pass this first round, how Centeno comes into the second, he comes back with the same energy. Ricardo Centeno talking about Ecuador, representing your country is one of the most gratifying experiences. I've been able to carry my flag to various places, Canada, Mexico, Brazil, Peru. Now in the United States, one of my objectives when I started was to do it, and here I am. One of the famous, well-known MMA fighters in Ecuador that comes to mind, not that many, but one of them being Chito Vera. Who's tearing it up. It just takes a couple guys to inspire a couple more guys and girls. And then we've seen it with Mexico. Mexico was in the dark ages not that long ago in MMA. Now they have They're champions everywhere. It, ha it can happen quickly. Obviously, Mexico has the ecosystem Ooh. of fighters with their boxing history. But still, you got to put in the work. you got to have success. Look at this exchange here. And maybe Dirty this could boxing be, inside. It, it could be a plan for Loreda. Keep that exchange going to get Centeno. Maybe a low blow. Right here. Brian Miner will break them up. Uh, Yoreda already he nodded, right said there. he was okay, but you can get five minutes. And immediately you notice that, that, that mark cut. right yeah. on his right cheek. Yeah, the, the excess of muscles could come into play in the latter part of the hey, fight, Max, transition. but here it is, yeah, taking out the replay. Ooh! You know, they already waved off, said he was okay, but do you take as much time as possible Absol seeing how, how explosive well, Centeno's it, been? It, 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 yes, um, but it depends too on the fighter because 
that in a way was benefiting Yoleta. Maybe that is the game plan to get Santana to just keep striking to get him exhausted. I thought you were going to say getting hit in the groin is oh, like no, you no, having no. a cafecito. No, get no, you going. no. <laughs> no <absolutely laughs> Maybe not. it is. I don't, I don't get a made of steel, Max. We've seen it before. It just can fire some people up. No one wants to get hit down there. Lead leg swept out there by Santana. Wild Ooh. overhand right. And Santana's just much more precise with his striking. Loretta's just wait. I think he has something up his sleeve here. He's, yeah, he's trying to lure him in. See, because Centeno will come in and then he'll back off. He's not as consistent. New rankings should be coming out shortly. Uh, Loretta's still listed at 170 pound number one, and that's a list that's going to grow because a lot more 170 pounders have been entering the ecosystem of Combate just over the last two months. Loretta does have those long legs. He tried to kick him Centeno there, but he doesn't want to do it from that place. He has to have that little distance. Better from Yoreda. He came in. He missed with the right hand, but... Oh, that's what he's trying. He's got that big power punch. Loreda does have a back... Oh! Great left hand from Loreda. And again, a little boxing in there, dirty boxing between the two. Yeah, the clinch work. Great overhand hook. Underhand hook. Fifth fight for, oh, good punch by Centeno, route one. Fifth fight in combate for Yoreda. And it looks like it's going to be an uphill battle as we get ready for round two. Still some things to work out for, for Marcos Yoreda. I, I like what you said. He's, he's waiting for that moment. But you can wait so much, and in between the wait, Centeno's yeah, taking advantage. He doesn't, and I'll get to the point why he doesn't, but let's take a look at some of the action here. Centeno did land that knee, now the clinch work. Got a low kick. Took Galera back with that shot. And a little dirty box in between there. Centeno getting the upper hand with some uppercuts. Galera with some shots, though, with that right hand, right hook. Centeno, though, very persistent. Coming right at him. Curious to see what's going to happen in this second round. Getting ready for round two. Marcos Lloreda is going to have to dig deep. El Capitan of the Freedom Fighters. He had some time with Marcos. Bet is in the sand, which certainly is positive. And, and, and to the point, Max, that you said right before between rounds, they may have something of a sleeve. This is something that he faced when he took on Ivan Choco Castillo, where he thought he won the fight, but the fight went the distance, and he ended up losing that fight. So he has to put the pedal to the metal if he wants to win this fight. You're in a pretty active uh, Castillo fight was one of three fights last year. This is his second fight in 2022. Said his camp was much more intense and humble. A lot more resistance training. You have to learn from defeat and maybe another low blow. Right there. Yeah, I couldn't, couldn't see it. In fact, Loretta even shoved off Centeno. Let's take a look at the uh, replay. Uh, eh. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think it was as uh, hard as that previous one. It, that, it, yeah, I can confirm. Yes. It was not. <laughs> it was not. Eh? Maybe, see, now this is Centeno using those five minutes. Look at this free play. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think. Centeno's wiggling around like he's trying to find some change in his couch sure, right there. <laughs> I mean, you got to do what you got to do if you're given those five minutes. And if you notice the two in that one minute break between rounds, sure. Centeno yeah. sat down on his stool. Right, he was a little heavy breathing Watch. there. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. Come on. Right. So he took advantage of that time. And neither fighter took a lot of time. But we'll see how that manifests itself. Second round, and not a lot of output from Yoda. Oh. He's looking for the big punch. Centeno caught him. Centeno comes in with ferocity. Just so much faster. He said one of his goals was to compete in the United States. He's here. The knee catches Yoreda. I, 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 I am. I must say though, I am impressed with Centeno. He's he's like a savage in there, chasing Yoreda. Fast pace. 
unlike his previous fights where he's more of the counter puncher, he's more of the patient one, the defensive one. He's on the offensive here. Yes, and the first round goes to Centeno, so this could be a, a benchmark moment for him. He said, it's very gratifying to see where I have come from. I carry photos from when I started fighting. Speaking of Centeno and Red, in garages. And now I'm proud to be fighting in the big leagues in the United States. And if he wins this, he can be really proud of his accomplishment, beating the number one welterweight. He is all over Lorena. Yeah, Lorena needs to move. He needs to cut the angles, because every time he comes at him with those flurries, Centeno is connecting. He's eating some of those shots. Yeah, Lorena has those kicks. He needs to, he has that big, long legs. Yeah, Lorena gives use. one and takes two. Also, work on some of those low kicks to break down Santana from moving. You get to see how big Lorena is when they are framed up. Santana's training certainly shining through. He looks precise, a man with a plan. Yeah, but look at Centeno. His energy's coming a little low. Why do you think he's trying to attempt to take the fight to the floor, Max? Over the head top there by Centeno. Much better applying the pressure. Now, this is Jordeda's chance right here to be the aggressor, to chase Centeno and flip the page. And you hear that, you hear Jordeda's corner. Let's go. He needs that aggression. Look at Centeno. Now he's back. Now he's backing up a bit. He's not being out of the offensive side here. Because he's trying to catch his breath. Now you're just setting him up. He's using that reach. Keeps doing that little hip swivel. I think Centeno feels it gets him where he needs to be. But he's, right. he's flipped that about three or four times. Yoreda takes a big punch after the kick, looking a little wobbly. And that's the second time that Yoreda throws that kick and Centeno attempts to grab it and go for a takedown. Oh, Centeno again, short left hand connects. Yoreda is just not on the same wavelength speed-wise. Yeah. Or power, really, for that matter. Yeah, I mean, physically, you, you can see the big difference here between these two. Did you hear Yoreda's corner? He goes, he's resting now. Yeah. Maybe see an opportunity for right. some offense. And that's what I've been saying. I, Centeno, that's why he's not as being the aggressor as we saw him in that first round. And that's when Yoreda has to capitalize. At least an attempt at a power punch by Yoreda. It almost connected. That's when all that ex extra cardio, extra tr uh, intensity in his training comes into play. Oh, another oh, big right clipped. hand. Centeno, every time Yoreda stands in the trenches there, he pays a price. He's covering up that right eye. I must say, though, even though Centeno is not being as offensive, every time Yoreda comes in, he'll let him throw one, and then he'll connect. Max Bretos, Rodolfo Roman here. A reminder, we're heading to the top of the hour. The Bantamweight World Championship. The man who is regarded as the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter ever out of Mexico. David Martinez defending his strap against Axel Osuna. It's going to be fantastic. Stick around. We'll get you there. We've got a lot of great action between then and now. Yoreda looking to finish strong here in round two. Oh, another left by Centeno. End of round two. Ricardo Centeno, perhaps on his way to judges' decisions in the first two rounds. Yeah, let's take a look at this action here. Centeno picking up right where he left off in that first round as an offensive fighter striking in that clinch work here, a little dirty boxing between the two. He attempted for the highlight reel with that flying knee. Failed in that attempt. Either way, he followed through once again. But midway through this round, Centeno's energy level came down just a bit. And Loreda, well, he needs to pick up the pace. We are back for round three. Marcos Yoreda cut up, beat up, 
Thanks to that man, Ricardo Centeno. In between rounds, Manuel Lopez, eye to eye with Yoreda. Yoreda said that he's like a father to me, I'm a son to him, and Lopez, who knows what he was saying, but it was like, it was one of those moments, like this is, this is it. Yeah, Centeno's corner said, this is your fight. This is it. And he was feeling it right here, right before we get started. I don't know what the delay is. It's been a stop and yeah, start I don't, fight. I don't, uh, Two stoppages due to low blows, one for each fighter. I don't see what the... For the corner, Centeno say keep using that right hand. Okay, round three there is underway. Go. Ricardo Centeno in red. He has nine professional victories. Seven are won by TKO, two by submission. So all his wins have finished. What will happen here? He's never gone a decision and seen his arm raised. And maybe there's a reason for that, although he starts to bang again. Centeno. Starting off fresh, lots of energy. Whoa. And they gave it to Yorena. Okay. Uh, mildly surprised, majorly surprised. I am surprised. It, it was, yeah. Now Yorena, if he caught here, that, that's gotta be inspiring. Oh, he caught him there with that right hand. That's what the corner has been saying. Use that right hand. Yoreda can take a punch. That much is true. Yep. He's been taking a few, and he still comes back resilient. So it's anyone's fight, Max. Trying to get that jab going. Set up the power punch for Yoreda. That jab is there all day. He needs to use that reach and follow up with those right hooks. Set up or set up the combination with the kicks. He has great kicks. He, he will, he'll throw in some flashy kicks every now and then and spinning elbows. Look right there. Just above the belt. Yoreda, always a great prospect. Five and one as an amateur, training for 12 years. Oh. Centeno combination. Yoreda slips on La Jaula. That was a pretty significant slip. Lucky to get his feet footing again. Now we're in the center of La Jaula. This is where it benefits Yoreda. Let's see if he... Sets the pace, sets the tone of the fight. Look at that right hook. Got in there. Yeah, he got in there. Not with a lot of power, but it did clip him. That lead leg, and we saw Yorena hit it once. It's kind of just sitting there asking for attention from Yorena, but he's not responding. Covering up again that right eye. He's been doing that the last two rounds. Again, this fight really reminds me of that fight that he had against Castillo. And you don't want to leave it to the judges because it didn't go his way. He has uh, yo-yoed back and forth with wins and losses in his combate career. Again, this is his fifth. First started fighting in 2013. He oh. won by an armbar in the first round. More from Centeno. Heavy punches, tight quarters, dirty boxing. Now, great stuff from Centeno, though, I must say. Great striking. Blood starting to flow from that right eye. I don't know how... If Yoreda's hurt there, but he continues to protect it. You can see the blood, but we don't know internally how bad it is. There's some, first time we're using him, seeing him with the jab. Yeah. It's worked. It, it has, because he has that, oh. Good right hand, right hand. Yep, but he has to follow up. Two minutes to go here, round three. Again, it's all even after two rounds. Centeno looking a little tired. Certainly not as fresh as we saw him, to be expected. Yeah, he's almost there like when your car starts going, ping, <laughs> time to fuel where's up. It, where's the station? <laughs> Hopefully he's not in the middle of a desert. <laughs> I would know, we're going electric here. Well, Lorena, look, that low kicks are there to oh, set up the left combination. Hand by Centeno. Fighting for himself, fighting for Ecuador. Once he gets in that exchange, though, Centeno is having the advantage, landing in the, uh, the, the uppercuts and hooks. Look at another one there. Yeah, Lorena needs to tick to that jab. He has a minute to go. It's actually been a better round for Yoreda. Yeah. He can, and he we may, see if he, he wins this round, this he wins yeah. this fight. He may pull this off. 
It would help to have a grandstand final go. minute. Blood yeah. really pouring from that right eye. I wonder if it's worse than it looks, and it looks pretty bad. This last minute is going to make a huge difference in what the judges see, Max. And right now, Loreda's looking good. And I think Zedeno's going to attack that right orbital area of Loreda because it's hurt and there's blood all over. There's another clip there, left hand. Zedeno's hurt Loreda, but Loreda has withstood the pain, withstood the flurries. 25 seconds to go, round three. Welterweight clash. Won't be surprised if both these guys just in the last seconds just go all out. This is it. Sneaky little right hand by Yoreda. It all matters. Yes, and then I'll call them in for the dance. You can see the uh, Freedom Fighters corner urging him on. He just has it in oh. his foot. Root oh. one powerful right hand from Santeno. He puts a little stamp on his calling card. Is it enough? This is going to be edge of your seat decision time. But somebody's going to win it. I won't ask for a vote, he doesn't like predictions. <laughs> he put me on the spot again, right? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to predict this one. It is super close. We'll be back with the official decision. Centeno Yoreda going the distance. We are back here, Combate Global. It is going to decision. Centeno on the left won round one. Yoreda on the right won round two. It all comes down to round three. Lupe Contreras, if you will. Después de tres vueltas, esta es la decisión oficial. El juez Lázaro anotó 29 a 28 a favor de Centeno. This is the official scorecard after three rounds. Judge Lazaro scores at 29-28 in favor of Centeno. El juez Rodriguez, 29 a 28 a favor de Lloreda. Judge Rodriguez scores at 29-28 in favor of Lloreda. Y el juez Celis anotó, 29 a 28. Judge Celis scores at 29 to 28. In favor of the winner by way of split decision. A favor del vencedor, por decisión dividida. El Conquistador, Marcos Lloreda. Marcos Lloreda coming from behind to get the victory via split decision. And the Freedom Fighters, folks, that's their guy, their capitán, <laughs> oh, victorious. Man, I, I, I got a kick every time I see Manolo. <laughs> I get excited all the time when the fighter wins. Shows much. Uh, love we love Marcos. He's a quality guy. Great interview. He had to really scrap for this result, but he got it. Main card coming your way next. Bueno, ese contexto de cuando estuve peleando con Francisco pues la verdad es que ya tenía toda la emoción arriba, era mi tercera pelea en la noche y pues bueno, este, yo creo que eh, mi motivo más fuerte era culminar lo que ya había empezado ese día. Eh, sabíamos que era un rival muy duro, sabíamos que ya era, ya era un rival este, que bueno, ya tenía muchas victorias por detrás. Yo sentí su pegada y estaba pegando muy duro. Entonces, este, ahora intenté un poco con las piernas, entonces vi este, que él iba a entrar con las manos, en eso subo la pierna y pues bueno, este, eh, lo alcanzo a conectar, sin embargo, bueno, es un rival muy fuerte, estaba muy duro y ganarle la verdad es que eh, me sirvió mucho tanto física como psicológicamente. No, pues con esa victoria yo me sentí súper super feliz, estaba muy emocionado, eh, había culminado ya lo que había empezado ese día. Sí, bueno, eh, contra Arturo Vergara, eh, empecé probando mis manos, él empezó pateando, entonces este, yo sabía que lo podía tocar con las manos, eh, me, me seguí esperando un poquito, seguí esperando hasta que se dio otra vez la ocasión de, de conectarlo con las manos y fue así como conecté con las manos, eh, se cayó y lo seguí igual eh, con el gran Ampaun en el piso. Entonces, este, ahí me detuvo la pelea el juez y ya fue cuando como le pude ganar. ¡David Martínez! 
fight that just concluded. Marcos Yereda defeating Ricardo Centeno. First round, Centeno dominating. Getting a lot of punches in close quarters from long range. And we could see it. It was etched on the face of Yoreda Rodolfo with big cuts on both sides, including that one on the right, which received a lot of attention throughout. Right, in the first round, no doubt here, Centeno just played a different fight, was the aggressor. But in that second round, especially in midway through, it kind of flipped the page. Loreda kind of sensed that Centeno just wasn't bringing as much as energy and impact as he did in the previous round. And he picked up on it. In that third round, I mean, there's no doubt that it, it, it clearly went to Loreda. He took that split decision. The Conquistador is back in the winning column. And every time I see Manolo jumping, man, <laughs> it, it's awesome when you have a coach like that. It's so excited that your fighter wins. Yeah, awesome. you can see how important it is. They have a lot of fighters. Everyone's the same. They go through there. They put a lot of work and effort. But Yoret has been there so long. And he, uh, he'll he take shots for other fighters. He will defend them. And I think every gym needs that. He is uh, that representative for Freedom Fighters. As we look at the uh, stats, uh, pretty even. We did see, the, surprisingly, a lot more kicks from Yoreda. But the four takedowns for Centeno, we talk about that with Combate. It is a striker's uh, company. We, they, the takedowns of Jiu-Jitsu matters. But if you can sit there and bang, it certainly gives you an edge. And, and Centeno went for the takes down. Usually, when a striker gets a little tired, you'll see that they'll go to the ground to try to catch a breath. And there we are, the challenger, Max. <laughs> Axel Osuna. Axel Osuna, you'd walk by him and you hear him talk, you would never think he was this level of fighter. He is a bad, bad dude. Left school to focus on fighting. He has a bright future, whatever he does. But this could be his calling card. And if he wins the Bantamweight title, look out, because we've said this, Rodolfo, this guy is in Mexico. And we talk about Brandon Moreno and all these other guys. This guy is at the top of the list of fighters that have come out of that country. Absolutely, he's there, and you're seeing him right here tonight. And then David Martinez, man, I mean, this man with that right hand has knocked out people, laid them out right in La Jaula. Can he do that to Osuna, though? That's the question. Our next fight up will be Diana Sanchez. This will be coming later this evening. She is going to make her pro debut, and you could say you saw her when she made her first breakthrough. She will face the challenge of another fighter coming from the Canary Islands, where they love to fight. So if you go to Spain, you visit the Canary Islands, don't pick a fight. Just a little advice there, as you see Damaris Olivares. She will also be making her pro debut. And we talked about that main event. It is going to be widely viewed down south of the border. It's Mexico City versus Guadalajara. When we talk about Chivas and America, there's a big rivalry. And now we can take it to the fighters game. As we see Aitana Alvarez. She's only won two of her first five fights, but it's so many distractions. We are confident that she can be one of the best flyweights on the women's ranks. Just has to start putting it together. We saw the first step in her last fight where she was comprehensive in victory. But same can be said for Jillian Knoll. She will not stop smiling. No. <laughs> you can smash her that. in the face, she will smile <laughs> right back at you. That That's that's a person right there that loves what she does. And, and it shows inside La Jaula. How she, she could be about to tap out, that lady will be smiling because she understands what the fight game is all about. That is the main card culminating with the Bantamweight world title. You are going to be entertained. And a reminder, it's going five rounds. Still no prediction from Rodolfo Roman. Don't, don't give me that. As you get a little later, all right? Okay. We get a little later. Maybe I'll after maybe Lupe sure. does the, the official decision. <laughs> a decision, I'll give you my prediction. <laughs> That's good. He's going to fill it out after the show. And that's how you become very good at sports gambling. You call stuff after it happens. But I don't yeah, gamble, man. It's Max. like getting the sports <laughs> almanac in Back to the Future. You I know? just read facts, Biff and then I, very, I put two and two wealthy. together and then you know come up yeah, with this stuff. That's right. We stay away. You can make predictions. Where are you? Who do you think is going to win? Is it going to be Osuna? Is it going to be Martinez? Reach out to us on Twitter. Roman, what is it? Roman DH? Yes, sir. DH. 
Max Preto Sports. Tell us who you think is going to win. We're live on Paramount Plus. We are live worldwide. Mi nombre es Axel Osuna, tengo 25 años y soy de Guadalajara, Jalisco, México. Yo peleo por ser. Ser la persona que le demuestra al mundo, al lugar donde salí, a mi gente, a mi familia, a mi equipo, que se puede. Trabajar bien duro todos los días, ponerle empeño a las cosas, fijarte una meta firme y trabajar hacia ella para que todo se logre. Mi estilo de pelea ha avanzado a pasos agigantados. Anteriormente yo era un striker total y creo que hoy en día puedo decir que soy un peleador bastante completo del cual te tienes que preocupar por sus golpes, por sus patadas, tanto te tienes que preocupar por mi lucha, por mi presión y por mi gran unpound. Realmente como ajustes como tal dentro del campamento para pelear con David no hubo muchos. Yo venía buscando esta pelea desde que decidí subir a 135 libras porque soy una persona que busca, que busca retos. Nunca le he oído pelear con alguien complicado, con alguien un poco difícil. Creo que para él y para mí representa un reto bastante interesante. Tanto yo como mi equipo ya teníamos analizado y presupuestado que esta pelea se iba a dar. La pelea mía contra David se va a desarrollar de manera dura, no hay otra manera. O sea, el hecho de que yo pueda controlar dónde se queda la pelea, si la dejo de pie, si la llevo al piso, eso para mí es muy importante. Yo creo que o lo finalizo yo a él o me finaliza él a mí. David, muchísimo éxito, muchísimas gracias por esta pelea y vamos a pelear. Drop all year for Combate Global. There have been some big fights, but perhaps none bigger than what we will unfurl in about an hour's time. The World Bantamweight title on the line between two of the best fighters at 135 pounds anywhere. Step inside. Get comfortable in La Jaula. But once you're in there, you better be ready to deliver the goods. It's not for the meek. And tonight, it is for a championship. Our good friends at Duda in it, broadcasting it throughout the United States in Spanish. Our friends at Televisa, this is going to be a heavily viewed fight. We will talk more about Axel Osuna and David Martinez for the strap, for the goal. But Aitana Alvarez and Jillian Knoll is going to be a good one at 125 pounds in the ever-growing women's division. Let's get to know these two fighters who will be going to war inside La Jaula. Every single moment we have is so precious. So if you're not enjoying it, it could be your last. Every single moment we have is so precious. So if you're not enjoying it, it could be your last. MMA, that's probably the most valuable thing it's given me as the community and just the people. I never really fit in anywhere until here. My name is Jillian Knoll and I'm from Spokane, Washington. Yo creo que los peleadores españoles pueden llegar a destacar ante otros países porque tenemos muchas ganas y, y mucha fuerza de voluntad para poder dar un buen espectáculo. Soy Tana Álvarez, tengo 22 años y vengo del País Vasco de España. I describe my fighting style as very much mix. I definitely love the ground and wrestling, but I've been working really hard on improving my striking to become a complete martial artist. Creo que, que va a ser una, una pelea bonita y que quizá pueda llegar a, a terminar antes de tiempo. I do think I'm going to win this fight because I train the hardest I can do and that's the only thing I expect is to win if I train the hardest. Expect a tornado because it's definitely coming towards her. Gillian, espero que hayas entrenado muy duro para esta pelea porque yo también lo he realizado y bueno, espero que demos una buena pelea. Te espero en la jaula. Lupe Contreras, that's his spot in the center of La Jaula, and he will be there for the main event. He'll be there for Jillian Noel. Jillian Noel, pardon me, and Aitana Entrando Alvarez. Entrando a La Jaula, Aitana Alvarez. Carrying the Spanish flag, Aitana Alvarez touches her heart. Really a remarkable human being. You can sit and talk to her and 
She can lay it all out for you about what's so important and why she is doing this, has overcome so much. She was very close to her father. She lost her father. And now she is uh, keeping his memory alive and building her fighting career. Still just about 22, about to turn 23. Everything's in front of her. And the view will be clearer with a win tonight against her opponent. Lupe Contreras is about to announce. Su contrincante, Jillian Noll. Jillian Noll grew up wrestling with her two older brothers. Brothers went into uh, football. That was a, a good way to blow off some steam. They would move away the furniture, get on the boxing gloves, and get to war. She knew then that fighting was something of interest. And then what she discovered, as we heard from her just a few moments ago, is it gives you clarity. Fighting opens up the doors and it's her comfort zone. Yeah, and what we've seen from her is that she feels more comfortable now with the striking. She has a very solid groundwork. She trains with the Warrior Camp up there in Washington. You see in the corner, Pablo Alfonso, one of the coaches, and she tends to strike a lot more. She's very confident. I think we'll see it here tonight against Alvarez, Max. This at 120. Five, little over the limit from Jillian Knoll, who is two years the senior of Alvarez. And Aitana Alvarez looking to even up her record. Looked really good the last time we saw her. Does she continue to improve? This in all likelihood, the toughest fight she has had. Let's go back to Lupe Contreras for the officials. Las reglas oficiales de la jaula, tres vueltas de cinco minutos, tres jueces utilizando el sistema de 10 puntos. Este duelo, división peso mosca, this bout. In the flyweight division, los jueces son, the judges are, Mark Streisand, James Lázaro y Eliseo Rodríguez. Presentando en la esquina azul, vestida de rojo, presenting the blue corner, wearing red. Sobre la báscula, marcó un peso oficial de 125 libras y media on the scale. She registered an official weight of 125 and one half pounds. Entra por sexta ocasión a la jaula. Con dos victorias y tres derrotas, she enters la jaula. For the sixth time as a professional, with two victories against three losses. De San Sebastián, España. Aitana Álvarez. Su contraria en la esquina roja, vestida de azul, her opponent in the red corner, wearing blue, su peso oficial, 126 libras y un cuarto, her official weight, 126 and one quarter pounds. Entra por quinta vez a la jaula, con dos victorias y dos derrotas, she enters la jaula, for the fifth time as a professional, with two victories against two losses. From Spokane, Washington, Jillian Valcarino! El referee de Panamá, Marcos Pérez. From Panamá, Marcos Pérez, the third inside La Jaula. Okay, there is Jillian No. From Spokane and from San Sebastian in Los Países Vascos of Spain, Aitana Alvarez. Yeah, look for Alvarez is striking, great low kicks. But again, she has evolved, especially with her wrestling. As for Jillian, she feels very confident now with her striking. Her last opponent was a kickboxing background practitioner, and she brought her the heat. Expect the same here from no, but if anything, she does have that background in the ground game. Wow, look at that vicious right hand. Tight quarters into the clinch. Jillian Ooh. Noel connecting there again. Noel victorious over Jennifer Triaru. Second round TKO in June of this year. In August of this year, Aitana Alvarez TKO second round victory over Tyler Schaefer. So mirror images with regards to the results we'll see with the fights. This is gonna be a stand up. Early on, indicators would confirm that. By the way, shout out to uh, Katie Perez, who will be competing next week. She's watching the show, Max. She's keeping an eye on the talent. All right, Katie, hello. Thanks for joining us on a Friday night. Where else would you want to be? 
Aitana Alvarez, again, her father trained her, whose father was in MMA. Would hear stories about her grandfather's boxing experience. So Alvarez has been a fighting family and completely part of Aitana's life. She used to practice karate, judo, and jiu-jitsu. She's turned into a bigger practitioner of the striking game. Good knee there by No. Yeah, does a clinch work here. No does have, if he ever has those hooks locked in. Alvarez now, so see, this is where the advantage goes to No. She does have great background in the ground game, but we have seen Alvarez evolve. What can she bring to the table here? Into the guard, creeping up that guard of Jillian No. Get some separation to drop some forearms. A great position from Aitana. She landed in some forearms, as you mentioned, but No very patient, looking for something that is available for her. This is a position where any mistake could be a problem. Quick look at the uh, referee cram. As you can see, the Uskadi flag, the Basque flag, there on the shorts of Aitana Alvarez. Jillian Noel drives an ice cream truck on her off time. Side thing I found, she goes, it fits me perfectly. Punching someone in the face and then handing them over an ice cream with a smile. <laughs> So bubbly, man. That's, she's a very charismatic fighter. She really is. And everyone loves ice cream. Not everyone can eat it, but everyone does love it. <laughs> Alvarez has taken the high ground and has made the most of it. Marcos Perez has been vocal, perhaps, yeah, he's, he's, thinking about splitting him up. But Alvarez is busy enough. Yeah, they're, they're, they're both busy. No one's defending. She's, she's exchanging with her every time that Alvarez shows something. She is being active. A good positioning from Alvarez here. She's putting all that body weight, pinning her to La Jaula so she can land in those strikes. But as you mentioned, Max, referee will have a close eye on this because if Noah doesn't do anything, if there's not much action, no has to stand it up. He's already alerting the ladies that this fight may be brought to the feet. The corner of Alvarez is saying, keep it there. This is where you want to do, but you got to stay active. But keep her there, and then they are aware that Jillian Noel is not too thrilled about being in here. But Marcos Bet is tempted. There it is. There's the break. Yeah, there it is. He had one foot in there, and now Noel with a minute to go back on her feet. This is what it is. Our, our women here in Combate Global, man, they always bring it, especially in the stand up game. Look at that right hand. From no, Alvarez firing back. Exchange of leather between these women. Both these women oh. talking about the uh, status of women in MMA. They know they are carrying a major responsibility oh. with them. Good right hand root one there and, by Alvarez. And no could take a punch. She just, she just absorbed that. She'll take one, two, and come back with another one fearlessly. Alvarez, his corner, very oh. animated, but Knowles now got her foot on the pedal. Just went right in there. Alvarez is trying to quell that as best she can. Ten seconds to go. No finished off their opponent that same way. She found the opportunity, laid a flurry of punches, and that's all she wrote. Could it be the same? We'll find out. Jillian Knoll not to be messed with. Jeez. You look at the smile, it, it could throw you off, but this is a, a, a fighter with a motor and a focus and a desire. You're gonna have to earn it if you're Aitana Alvarez. Here we go, take a look back at that first round. Alvarez heavy striking right from the top, but no, firing back with her pair of hands. She laid in the knee as you saw in that quick ex exchange of a clinch work. So you can see from the referee cam, the fight was brought down to the floor, but eventually, referee stood them up, and that's how the fight ended in that first round. We are back here for round two. Both fighters uh, showing a few scars from the battle. Alvarez a little worse for wear. She had 
a game plan, which she executed. She got Noel to the ground, Rodolfo, but when Noel came up, I think Aitana Alvarez realized that Noel has got a motor, came right out and fired she's, away. She's like a slingshot with that right hand. She'll come in and fire. And Alvarez needs, Alvarez needs to keep moving, because once Noel gets in her groove, there's no way of stopping her. Noel looking even more, much more complete than her victory last time out. This was the round that both of these fighters finished their that. opponents. She just set it up, man, and she just will not stop. Yeah, you can see Alvarez is like reconsidering yeah. some of the game plan. Doesn't want to get caught in the pocket with Noel. No. And, and you see her, she's even you know, backpedaling a bit. So she oh, needs to look at that right hand. Yeah, and yeah they, they look said at take down. She went for it, it was quelled. Noel on top. No, Noel has great takedown defense. Look, when you're able to just push off a fighter like that, I mean, that just shows how confident you are and where you want this fight to end. And that's right here in the cellar and the Haula exchanging. Training out of Warrior Camp. Jillian Noel saying, Warrior Camp is my home. They are my family. She lives in the gym and you can see her. Oh. She's been working on her craft. They gave that one to Alvarez. Well, she had a good start to the opening round. I will say that Jillian Noel has got round two by the scruff of the neck, but still early, early. Asking for kicks, Alvarez's corner. Oh, good right hand again. Noel's getting it in there, short right hand. Yeah, Noel's being more the aggressive here, being pressuring Alvarez. Yeah. Alvarez looks uncomfortable. Yeah, she does. Left hand by Noel, not much behind it, but it connects. Using both hands very well, Noel, and her feet. I like what you said about the slingshot. It feels like she's yeah. slinging rocks right now towards Alvarez. And she puts all that power coming from that back leg. Take a look at that, those stats there that you're looking in real time. More punches thrown by Noel, kicks as well. That, and I think Alvarez was leading those categories, right. but now Noel's passed her and starting to distancing herself. Just as that went on, it went from 82-74 yeah. to 89-74, 11-5, 13-5. that one takedown that just happened in this round from Alvarez, and that's about it. Does Alvarez want to get this to the ground? We had that one takedown attempt, which was squashed. But Noel does have that background in jiu-jitsu. It, it, could, it could backfire, but no, Alvarez was doing a good job and positioning her body where she can land in some hammer fists, work in the rib cage area. But, two minutes to go. Round two. Right now she's using that distance there, moving around, cutting the corners, is exchanging. Now Alvarez piggyback or, or going back to that, that strategy that she had from the beginning, just stick and move, stick and move. Good left hand there by Noel. It's all about impressing the judges here. She has a, a hole to dig out of after losing round one. Official scorecard. Great job from Noel. Where else but Combate Global do you have a fight between fighters from Spokane, Washington and San Sebastián, Spain? <laughs> Great little kick there from Alvarez. And you hear the she's, trying to, she's trying to match the striking, right. Alvarez. And, and that's the thing, when, you, when you're exchanging that pocket, Noel does have the advantage. That's right. Alvarez needs to stick and move, stick and move, which it has been working. It was a tight clinch there that she was able to get something off, speaking of Alvarez in red. Looping overhand right by Noel. Back into that clinch here for Alvarez. Neither wants to engage. Ooh. Love that she parried that that right hand and Alvarez just followed up with her pair of them. Alvarez, who talks so much about her father, did lose her father two weeks before a fight, a fight oh. that she lost. Great body work now from Alvarez to Noel. Now a takedown attempt perhaps gets the back of Noel. Final seconds, round two. You know, Something towards, to build yeah, on round. here for round three for Alvarez. He gets yeah. Noel to her knees. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to
going to head to a third round. Sorry, it, it seemed like No had the upper edge in that opening round, and then it right, went right back to Alvarez. Let's take a look at the highlights here. No went to the exchange, threw her opponent down. Fight went right back to the feet. And then Alvarez exchanging here once again. She tried to go for some clinch work here. Connected with an uppercut. Back and forth. Look at them shot stairs. But then she worked for the body towards that round at the end as well. But no, always smiling, no matter what. You gotta love it from this girl, man. Still that smile. Very little coaching from the corner, too. They have confidence and faith in their fighter, Julian Knoll. <laughs> There's the green. You can, you can, I can assure you underneath that mouthpiece, it's all teeth smiling ear to ear. Round three, the question is who won round two? Alvarez won round one. And I've seen No here a couple of times in, in combate. When that girl's smiling, she's coming in viciously, I'll tell you that much. Don't let that smile fool you. She has walked through that, but has she looked better than the last fight? Uh, Jillian Noll, it looks like she's worked on some things. The striking, the striking, and it, it has been, it, we saw the involvement in that previous fight against Jennifer Turo from, uh, from France, what a kickboxing background. And she even said it in, in the interview this week during media week, or media day, where she said, yeah, I... I oh, she said she's being choked. Alvarez looked at Marcos ah. Perez said, well, can she do that? A standing choke. Seen it once. <laughs> hey, but they let you this do year? it. This <laughs> Get every edge you can. Oh man, we have. <laughs> We're even. Oh, man, I, 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 that was a good yeah, round for Noel. She yeah, started yeah, well and she absolutely. persevered. So it comes down to the third All round. All right. So much at stake. A win would be huge for both of these fighters. I think they've done enough, even in the defeat. We'll see them again, but it is a big step back, but a huge step forward for a win. Back to back close fights. 125. Pound fight, oh. very competitive. The current number one is Maritza Sanchez. Melissa Amaya, number two. Some good fighters. We saw Lucero Acosta La Loba. She was number four. Maybe she moves into the top three when the new rankings come out. Alvarez is searching for that takedown. And she takes that takedown and does something with it. To solidify that win, uh, or solidify that, that victory in, in this third round. Noel just watertight, not letting anything through with the body contact. Yeah, good stuff on Noel closing that clinch. Noel just looks, tight. Noel looks better across the board. Everything's good, even the takedown defense. Yeah. Massively improved. She's stopping Alvarez from every corner, not allowing her to take her down, positioning her body, so she puts her hips down. Putting in that shoulder, pinning her to the hala, not allowing her to do anything. But now she has it. Now it's flipping here. She needs to be careful. She's got that leg. Uh, Donna Alvarez is just trying to slow down Noel, and she will not go down. And now she flipped it. Now she should throw in some knees here. It's a good shot. Again, good we opportunity. saw Alvarez trying to go yeah. down the hook, and Noel would not have it. No room. Marcos Perez will separate them. These two fighters are in the top 10 in the flyweight. Uh, Noel is currently eighth. Alvarez is ninth. It's coming down to the wire, Max, between these two. And did you hear the corner of Alvarez? She yep. says, we are losing, Aitana. Get urgency. Vamos. That's that open scoring too, Max. You know, they're able to see those scores between rounds. And we've had a conversation with fighters at corners to say, do, do you let your fighter know some do, some don't? Aitana Vamos is the message from the corner. Oh. She's listening, but as she comes in, she took a good right hand from Noel. Alvarez sneaked in there two, three shots. That's another one to straight jab that connected to Noel. Alvarez looking good so far in this round. It is the finest of margins in this third round. A takedown, a good combination could mean the difference. Right hand from Alvarez. Noel can't respond with the equal venom, but does come over the top. 
Aubrey just seems to be more consistent compared to no. another. A minute to go here in the final round. Alvarez won round one. Noel won round two. You hear the corner from Noel telling her, work the leg, kick her. Almost and that's a to set it up. Yeah, setting it up for some combinations. But Alvarez now bringing it to the clinch. And Alvarez is banking on a takedown here to be the difference. Right, and that, that could be the big difference if she were to take her down right here. No close has this been. Noel again with brilliant defending. Yeah, great clinch work there. She gets nice and upright, wedges in there like yeah. a doorstop. Great pummeling. See how she puts that shoulder there. This is going to be very tough to call. We always say you don't want to leave it to the judges. Sometimes you, the judges don't want you to leave it to them because they're going to have a real dilemma. They can make them work. <laughs> they're going to go, oh boy. So much at stake for these two fighters. And she's apologizing yeah. for the choke hole. Well done, class act Jillian Noel, but it's now judges time. Soy eh, David Martínez y soy de México, del Estado de México. Eh, yo creo que mi motivación principal para pelear es eh, mi familia, es mi equipo y es este, las personas que me apoyan tras de mí. Pues volver a la jaula de combate global, la verdad es que es todo un honor para mí. Es una experiencia eh, muy padre y es algo que a mí me emociona y yo quiero mucho estar ahí de vuelta. Eh, Anderson Silva decía, uno no busca el knockout, sino que solito llega. Yo voy a seguir haciendo mi juego. Puede ser knockout, puede ser este, sumisión, puede ser lo que venga. Entonces estamos preparados para eso. Bueno, ese contexto de cuando estuve peleando con Francisco, pues la verdad es que ya tenía toda la emoción arriba. Era mi tercera pelea en la noche. Inmediatamente que lo cae, no lo pienso dos veces y lo sigo golpeando hasta que el, el referee me detuvo la pelea. Con esa victoria yo me sentí súper super feliz, estaba muy emocionado, eh, había culminado ya lo que había empezado ese día y ganarle la verdad es que eh, me sirvió mucho tanto física como psicológicamente. Los minutos previos a la pelea, cuando estoy entrando al círculo de combate global, se siente una, sen una sensación dentro de ti impresionante, eh, sientes que lo puedes hacer todo, sientes que eres rápido, que eres fuerte, que eres muy inteligente, entonces eh, realmente te sientes completo, te llena ese, ese sentimiento y va a haber una guerra arriba de, del ring, vamos a dar un buen espectáculo para la gente y pues que va a ganar el mejor. El juez Streisand anotó 29 a 28 a favor de Álvarez. Judge Streisand scores a 29-28 in favor of Álvarez. El juez Lázaro, 29 a 28 a favor de Noel. Judge Lázaro scores it 29-28 in favor of Noel. Y el juez Rodríguez anotó 29 a 28. Judge Rodríguez scores it 29 to 28 in favor of the winner by way of split decision. A favor de la vencedora por decisión dividida. Jillian Valkyrie No! This was so tight, wow. split decision, and you know the judges that gave that third round to Noel probably had to really flesh it out as much as they could. Back-to-back -back victories for Noel, three and two, and on the rise in the women's flyweight division. Well-deserved. Well, like Donna Alvarez had a strategy, Rodolfo, in the opening round, and she executed it. There was a moment that they were on the ground. Marcos Perez picked them up, and then it swung in favor of Jillian Noll. Looking back at this, I had one thing that I would see from Alvarez. She was standing up too much, so she would take those shots. She wasn't bobbing and weaving for no. Again, when she would get in that flurry of punches, there was no way of stopping her. She'll come in and just lay them all out, and those shots were very effective. And I think that's what impressed the judges more. And Alvarez attempts, those attempts at takedowns, no one just will push her and shove her away. That shows a lot of progress in this fighter. 
knowing that she's very confident. So I think that's something that maybe the judges also allowed them to sway the victory to know. I mean, again, it, it was, she, she just had the upper edge. It was a razor thin of a, of a fight here. There's no doubt here. Alvarez, though, that she, she had a great crisp boxing, no doubt. She was going for that takedown about two, three times. And every time she would, No will stop it every single time. So that defense from No also would make a difference. But again, this was a very close fight. Congratulations again to this young lady. Up next, debut time for Deanna Sanchez. Now finding out of Bellingham, Washington. And she will face the challenge of another Spanish fighter in Damaris Olivares from the Canary Islands which where the majority of the Spanish fighters come from. That is coming your way next live on Paramount Plus. Worldwide audience, Combate Global. Back here, La Jaula awaits our next fight. Damari Alvarez taking on Diana Sanchez, both making their professional debut. And let it be known, this is a starting point for mixed martial artists. They have been handpicked to make this opening bout with this incredible company and see where it goes. You got to start somewhere. You get to see the starting point along with them. This will be in the strawweight division a stacked weight class in combat. They will see if one, if not both, these can make their way towards the rankings and beyond. Originally from Ferndale, Washington, we have heads up to say she did all her PR in Spanish. Now she's going to do her talking inside the jaula. Let's go to Lupe Contreras. Entrando a la jaula, Diana Sanchez. Diana Sanchez heard from her mother growing up that girls cannot compete in combat sports. And since she kept hearing that from her mother, she wanted to prove her wrong. Today is that day. Trains at Catalyst MMA in Everett, Washington. We know Washington State is fertile ground for mixed martial artists, including our own Juliana Peña. Yeah, the Mari Alaba, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. Diana Sanchez here has a, some great ground defense. Look out for that. Watch out for the knees and the clinch. Some of the stuff that she did in the amateur levels, but it all changes when you're in the pro levels, especially walking inside La Jaula. It's a whole different ball game. Back to Lupe Contreras. Su oponente, Damari Olivares. Training at Taz Jimanar in Las Palmas, in main city in Las Gran Canarias. Seba Santana, combate fighter, trains out of there. We've had many other fighters come from that part of the world. Kevin Cordero as well, we hope to see here very soon. Started training martial arts with Muay Thai, where many fighters have their launching point and then move to kickboxing, eventually MMA, as you, she is going to try and prove you got to have an all-round game. She has a very strong background in kickboxing and Muay Thai. St started transitioning into MMA because she was interested in the jiu-jitsu game and started applying it. But look out for those low kicks, heavy combinations from the hands. Should be a fun stand-up fight between these women. Head-to-head, cara a cara, face-to-face. Damari making her debut at the age of 31. We're all even on the high two inch reach advantage for Sanchez. We're in the strawweight division. Olivares coming in a whole pound below the mark. Feeling good at this weight class. We're ready to go on this historic Friday night for Combate Global. For the official announcements, we go to La Voz, Lupe Contreras. 
Continuamos con mucha más acción. Tres vueltas, división peso paja. We continue with much more action, three rounds. In the strawweight division, los jueces, the judges. Eliseo Rodríguez, Ricardo Celis y Mark Streisand. Presentando la esquina azul, vestida de negro, presenting the blue corner, wearing black. Sobre la báscula, marcó un peso oficial de 115 libras y media. On the scale, she registered an official 115 and one half pounds. Esta noche, hace su debut profesional dentro de la jaula de combate global. Tonight, inside of la jaula, she is making her professional debut from Ferndale, Washington. Diana! Sánchez. Su rival en la esquina roja, vestida de rojo, her opponent in the red corner, wearing red. Su peso oficial, 114 libras, her official weight, 114 pounds. Igual que su rival, esta noche, debuta a nivel profesional dentro de la jaula, like her opponent. She too is making her professional debut inside of la jaula, representando a Las Palmas, Gran Canarias, España. Damari. Olivares, el referí de Panamá, Marcos Pérez. Marcos Pérez, panameño, third inside la jaula. Ya están las reglas, quiero una pelea limpia, ¿ok? Te voy a ir a mi comando en todo momento, ¿ok? Toquen guantes y van a hacer fin. There is Diana Sanchez and Damari Olivares. Started with kickboxing. It was brought to her attention on the combat. Had to know she had to work on the floor. And for Damari Olivares, all in red, the Spanish red and yellow, single leg that goes into a, a little further up into a clinch. And you might have heard Max, the corner of Sanchez, put that pressure. That's the pressure that he was asking for. Just go straight to the ground. You want to do that against a stand-up fighter just to throw them off guard right from the bat. You'll see some growing pains, I am sure, but you'll see some talent shine through. These fighters have been hand-selected as ready for this moment. The gyms in Spain, and certainly Taz Jimenez in the Canary Islands said, Olivares is the one. She says, this is my dream. Here is where I can obtain it. Yeah, referee already gave her the alert that if they don't do any action, he's going to split this up. Take it to the uh, center of La Jaula. Now a little bit of separation. Only both are considered strikers, so it's interesting that this is the way we begin. All right, Sanchez might go here. Well, she had an opportunity to take it to the floor, but she got right back to the feet. Olivares wants this in the center of La Jaula so they could both exchange. Diana Sanchez, who says, I feel I am the same person in and out of the jaula in the gym. I am respectful, but if you don't respect me, I can break some heads. Sounded better in Spanish, the head breaker line. <laughs> Sanchez on her like a pit bull, not letting her go anywhere. That clinch, trying to Down take the fight goes. to the floor. Yep, that's exactly where she wants Almost it. Almost the mount. Yeah, she may have that mount, or she may look something for like a Rear naked choke, maybe she needs to position herself quite well, wrap those legs around. Excellent transition there. Sanchez might finish this fight very early. Would be surprising, she's got it. She's got working, they're saying that she's tapping. Is she? I, I, Nothing I official, I no, still moving. It. I can't see it, and by this time she probably is asleep if she was tapping. But no, no, she's up. Yeah, there's a tap, there's a tap, it's over. Diana Sanchez is. had a game plan, high kicking capoeira. She wanted the back, she got the back, she got the finish. First round, 1-0. Made it look easy. The corner was right, they said she was tapping. Put pressure, pretty, yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we couldn't see it from that angle, right? But he said it right from the start, put pressure. Put Able pressure. to lock it in. Deanna Sanchez will talk about it. She's emotionally moved, has had so many challenges in her life. Soak it all in, Deanna. Excellent stuff, Deanna Sanchez. This is the good stuff here. 
Yeah, we didn't get into her story. She has a great story as well, Max, but. Uh, we will try to share it as best we can. 20 years old, her family was homeless. We'll talk about that here when we return. We'll get the official decision as well inside the Haula. Back here getting the official decision. What a moment for Deanna Sanchez and you were able to watch it and share this moment with us. Now she's about to get her arm raised. What a moment. Let's go to Lupe Contreras. El tiempo oficial, dos minutos, cuatro segundos del primer episodio, the official time. Two minutes, four seconds of the opening round. Your winner, by way of submission, la ganadora por sumisión. En su debut profesional, Diana Sanchez. You're going to love her story. Six siblings. Her family was homeless for a few months when she was 20. It did bring the family together. Her big accomplishment, buying a house at 23 and getting to put a roof over her family's head. She has an autistic son. Nothing was easy for Diana Sanchez. She had to fight for it, literally and figuratively, and her fighting gets her her first professional to victory tonight. Right from the start, her corner said, pressure her, pressure her. That's exactly what she did. She listened to her coaches. Sanchez went right from the start for the takedown, and right here she had that rear naked choke. The corner was saying she was tapping. We couldn't see it from that angle until we got that one right there that we saw where she clearly tapped. And that's all she wrote. A very quick victory and a quick debut for this young lady. Bienvenidos to La Jaula. Also maintaining her uh, her studying business social media marketing. We need more of those. Social media marketing, we need it everywhere. <laughs> so well done, but if she keeps this fighting thing, that'll be priority number one. Just a lot on her plate, and that's why we respect what she was able to do here. Well, it's time, folks, the main event, the Bantamweight Championship. There's Axel Osuna. Will it be his night? Will he be the new champion? Much more Combate Global. There's the champ right there. There are the combatants. Foreground, Axel Osuna. Far ground, David Martinez. They'll be making their way to the Haula in moments. Bantamweight title on the line. There is a uh, Axel Osuna. He has earned this spot. Two impressive wins in 2022. Locked in. Looks like a choir boy. <laughs> but he is mean, vicious inside the Haula. And he knows his life will change. All he has heard about how good is David Martinez is. Martinez deserves all the accolades. He has earned it. Every time we see him, it's wow. Took in that tournament, that's the reason we has that strap around his waist. There's no doubt that there's a reason why he is the champion. The last fight he took was against Anturo Vergara, the uh, man from Chile. It, it was not for a title. Uh, a man who had knocked out his previous two opponents, finished them off in quick fashion, and Martinez flipped the coin on him and he finished him off very quickly. Again, there, there's no doubt why this guy, there's no reason why this match shouldn't be champion, but Axel Osuna has every right to bring it to him. There's no doubt he's a great, strong challenge to Martinez. He's had strong competition to get to where he is today. And as uh, Rodolfo pointed out, it's worth mentioning, he won the Bantamweight title in the tournament in May of 2021. 
the Vergara fight was not a title fight. This right. is his first title defense and tonight. In, and in that tournament, he, he took on some studs, and we'll take a look at some of those names. Yeah, I'm, I'm a seasoned guy in the final at Cisco Rivera among three, two others on that night. We're just about ready for the main event. Miami, bienvenidos a Miami. It's a Friday night. It's an electric evening. There's a lot going on, but there's nothing as exciting as what's happening in our studios inside the Jaula in moments. The Combate Global Bantamweight World Title Clash. It's Mexico City versus Guadalajara. The Black Spartan versus Axel Osuna. Martinez in his first title defense, looking to prove that he is pound for pound the best prospect ever to come out of Mexico. But you saw the face of Axel Osuna absolutely locked in, knowing what is in front of him. A chance of a lifetime. He earned it. Will he take advantage of it? A closer look at the challenger. Yo peleo por ser la persona que le demuestra al mundo, al lugar donde salí, a mi gente, a mi familia, a mi equipo, que se puede. Yo venía buscando esta pelea desde que decidí subir a 135 libras porque soy una persona que busca retos. Nunca le he oído a pelear con alguien complicado, con alguien un poco difícil y yo estaba seguro que esta pelea se iba a dar tarde o temprano. Y hoy en día puedo decir que eso va a ser una de las peleas más interesantes de mi carrera. La mayoría de las posiciones en las que los peleadores se sienten incómodos, para mí se han vuelto un lugar bastante confortable. O lo finalizo yo a él, o me finaliza él a mí, pero realmente no creo que llegue a los cinco rounds. Entrando a la jaula, el retador, Axel Osuna. An amazing combat sports resume. He's competed in Muay Thai and K1, training out of Samurai FC in Guadalajara. Four and one, I should say five and one MMA record. Five and oh in Muay Thai. A hundred wins, three defeats in a decorated boxing career. It all comes to this. He beat two top 10 Bantamweights to get this title fight. It's here, now he's got to take advantage of it. He said in his interviews, I've had no easy route to get to where I've been. Some of the guys that he took on is Edgar Chedais, who's, who's a stud that we've seen compete here. That was his first opponent when he made his debut as a mixed martial artist. It just goes to show you the type of talent that he has taken on. And it was that victory over David Solorzano back in August 26, when he won by way of stoppage or TKO the third round that earned him this title opportunity. Prior to that, he beat Maximiliano Gonzalez in the third round by TKO. That was back in May. This guy has been on a streak of victories, two in a row. And that Junior Cortez, that was his only defeat. It was by way of unanimous decision. So, and, and, and even though, even, even that fight itself, right? You saw his evolving, you saw his evolution as a fighter, as a well-rounded fighter. He's a superb athlete too, just like his opponent. David Martinez. Pues volver a la jaula de combate global es todo un honor para mí. Es una experiencia muy padre y es algo que ya vengo buscando desde que bajé la última vez. Defender mi cinturón y tener el título a 135 libras, la verdad es que para mí siempre fue un sueño. Y ahora que tengo la oportunidad de defenderlo, pues lo voy a hacer con lo mejor. Es una gran responsabilidad y un gran reto. Mi objetivo es jugar la estrategia, apegarme en la estrategia que llevamos contra el rival y la verdad es que el golpe, la patada, la sumisión viene por sí solo. 
tiene que estar preparado, yo estoy preparado, estoy listo para defender el cinturón y que bueno, vamos a dar un gran show, va a ser una, una pelea entre estilos, va a ser mexicano contra mexicano y pues bueno, va a ser una guerra, así que este, tiene que estar muy preparado. El campeón reinante, David Martínez. His entire career with Combate Global, which you can also say about Axel Osuna, but his career goes all the way back to April 2018. First round TKO victory. You knew that there was something special about this guy. He's going to be a success whatever he does in life. Right now, he's an elite fighter, studying to be a doctor, a surgeon, finishing his degree there. He's just a remarkable dude. The thing that's about him, he's an absolute monster inside the cage. Not only the champion at the Bantamweight, Rodolfo, but when he fights, he takes your breath away. That right hand, look forward to it. He's gonna, he's gonna use it when he has that opportunity. He has laid out fighters without just one strike of that right hand, so Osuna can't get too close. He has to move around just a bit, bob and weave, use some of that wrestling. For Martinez, man, I mean, he's just fast-paced, quick on his feet, that kickboxing background. I mean, essentially, this man learned how to fight before he learned how to walk. I mean, that because fighting is in their blood, in their family history. He was born in fighting. He took on guys such as Francisco Rivera Jr., as you mentioned in that tournament, to get that victory, a seasoned veteran in the world of MMA. Prior to that, he defeated Alan Cantu Garcia and Alex Gonzalez. So it just goes to show you that this man had to defeat three men to get that title. He is the real deal, but now he has a tough challenge against another hungry fighter in Axel Osuna. Both guys made their weight clean. Remember, Axel Osuna started as a flyweight, so he found the comfort at 135 pounds, which could make him a very dangerous guy. He does have a height advantage. The reach advantage goes to Martinez. Both of them still in diapers, just getting started. And again, it's a five round fight. Title fight is here. The moment's arrived. Let's go to Lupe Contreras. Este es el evento estelar de la noche. This is the main event. Cinco vueltas en juego. El campeonato peso gallo de combate global. This bout, five rounds on the line. The combate global bantamweight championship. Los jueces son, the judges are, Ricardo Celis, Mark Streisand y Eliseo Rodriguez. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. En la esquina azul, el retador in the blue corner, the challenger, vestido de verde con blanco, wearing green with white, su peso oficial, 134 libras y un cuarto, his official weight, 134 and one quarter pounds. En su séptimo combate, con cinco victorias y una derrota, in his seventh professional bout, with a record of five victories against one lone defeat, de pura sangre tapatilla, Guadalajara, Jalisco, México. El Charro, Axel Osuna. En la esquina roja, vestido de rojo en the red corner, wearing red. Su peso oficial, 134 libras y media. His official weight, 134 and one half pounds. Esta noche, entra la jaula en defensa de su título, con un récord de ocho victorias y solo una derrota. Tonight, he enters la jaula en defensa de su título, with a record of eight victories against one defeat. El campeón reinante peso gallo de combate global de Catepec, Estado de México. The Black Spartan, David Martinez. El referee, Brian Miner. Brian Miner, the third inside the jaula. Gentlemen, we know the rules already. Fight hard, keep it clean. You want to touch gloves, do it now. Good luck to you both. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go. Here we go, folks. Main this event, is man. 
title on the line. Five rounds max. Ooh, I don't need a Cuban cafecito right now. No right. more cafecitos no, for Rodolfo. No, 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 no. This is five round fight, but will it go the distance? They, these guys don't go the distance. 92% combined of finishing fights. That is the numbers, Max. When you combine all their records together, they got a 92% chance of finishing a fight. The only time Osuna, who is in green and white, he gets there. They're both they've got some sort of semblance of the Mexican colors in their shorts. The only time Osuna's gone the distance was his lone defeat to Junior Cortez back in June of 2021. Uh, Martinez, who comes in hot with that right hand, seven TKOs of his eight victories, so they don't go the distance. It would oh. be surprising to see if it went five rounds, but it could. Look at Osuna try to go for the takedown already. Immovable object, irresistible oh. force. Another right hand by Martinez. It clipped he is so him. fast. It clipped him. This is a huge step up in class. Osuna's fought some good fighters, but no one in Martinez's class as he just wipes away that takedown attempt. The pace already, these guys. They're just quick on their feet. Oof. Cash the lead leg. Martinez hits his, Osuna misses. Zen Martinez is fast, man. He's just really quick on his feet. So Osuna needs to pressure him. He needs to come into his, his range to stop that movement. Because he'll love to set up those, those hand combinations, land that right hand, but he'll set it up with those kicks. Stayed out of range of Osuna so far. Nothing has struck Martinez while Martinez has got his as he goes upstairs there. It was flushed there by Osuna, but still impact. Yeah, Osuna needs to work the body, stick and move, work the body to bring him down. See how Martina has to come down a bit. It's a good opening there for Osuna to sneak in some shots to the body. Incredibly, in the tournament, the, uh, the Bantamweight tournament, which there were one round fights, yeah. he finished Alejandro Gonzalez in the quarterfinals. And then in the final against Cisco Rivera, he finished it in the second round, which was a three-round fight. So he finishes tournament fights. Finishes everything. Oh, more calf kicks from Martinez. And they're coming in with speed. Power, another one. Two, three calf kicks already he's landed. He needs to check them. We always talk about national pride on the line. These are city bragging rights. Mexico City and Guadalajara always connected via sport, mainly through football, but now here in MMA. As you can see in the distance, David's sister, Oof, Meli deep. Martinez, who is also a fighter. Very, very good one. The Martinez family, as you touched on, uh, fighting out of the womb. That's what they do. <laughs> it's a fighting family, and they've had a lot of success. Oh, another calf oh, kick. That's like a lumberjack kick, just knocking down timber. Power coming from straight from those hips. As soon as eating them, he looks okay, but how much of that can you take? Now, the thing that he has to, whether well, Osuna needs to be careful is because if he gets too close, he might be met with that right hand. <clears throat> so he needs to be cautious as he moves in. But again, Martinez playing a, a really smart fight here, crunching down a bit, moving around, good on his feet, setting up for something. And, and you could see, Max, the, the mutual respect. Oh, that, that's a shot to the quad area. It's, he's, he's worked that entire leg. Yep. From the ankle to and the it, quad. And that, that left calf already is already red. Look at it. Wow, that thing just was like a car crash, that foot coming up. Well, that's how you stop. That's how you stop a boxer, Max. Cut up his legs. Martinez changes stances. And another Keeps working. One. Now it's really bothering Osuna. He might have to switch it. If he feels comfortable with it. Well, he's still using it to kick. A little better, a minute to go, opening round. That one pushes back Osuna again. Good strategy so far for Martinez, stopping Osuna from allowing him to pressure him by attacking those legs. We saw Osuna for the first time, October 2018. It was a fight card that was held in Guadalajara. Oof. He was a flyweight at the time. He took on Edgar Chaidez out of Mexicali. Submitted him with the triangle in the second round. That's when he knew he had something, where he proved the doubters oh. wrong. He's here, but this is a different kettle of fish. Martinez is a handful, and he has done very well in this opening round. And then we talk about it, if they get to those championship rounds, both these guys got good cardio, so they can, they can go the full 25. Oh yeah, these two are proper athletes with plenty of wind in their sails. 
As we're heading to the end of the first round, another impactful shot from the Black Spartan. And we're off and running. Nice. David Martinez, as is tradition, showing his entire toolkit with what he can do. Kicks, strikes. Calf kicks, Max. That was it. This is the story in this first round. He collected about a good, a good five kicks, five, six kicks he connected, bruising up that left calf of Axel Osuna, not allowing him to put any pressure on Martinez. So far, the strategy that the Black Spartan is using is working to his advantage. We are back, round number two, and we talked about in our pre-fight show how if it, you're, you're talking about all-round fighting, Osuna's got the better all-round game. Martinez is a pure striker. Uh, we didn't see anything in an attempt with takedowns, any Once. sort of grappling, one but little was, yeah. glimmer. But Osuna's got to get that on track. You've got to find a way to slow down this irresistible force that is David Martinez. Well, one thing I notice is Comparing both of the fighters, just looking at their body, that left leg or left calf of Osuna has some a little bit of red already bruised up. But look at Martinez's body. He's Osuna connected some body shots. There's some bruising. Look at that. Yeah, you're right. right on, that, on that on uh, that abdomen right, area. Right underneath the rib cage. So he is connecting. He is doing some sort of damage to Martinez, but he has to be more consistent to break down Martinez because he's so fast with those leg kicks. And he sets oh. them up so he can follow up with those punches. Martinez talking about his camp. Uh, he worked hard. Same strategy. We want to bring it to a war. That Ooh. is what we want. He knows people tune in to see David Martinez. They want to show. Question mark the kick. Osuna ate it. Now a takedown. That's so situation. Quick to off. Martinez so smiling. He's got a Jillian Knowles smile going on right now. <laughs> Wow. You can Great see. way to bounce back from Martinez from that. Osuna's been situation. eating some really well. No surprise there. Martinez right. wins the first round. Official scorecard. Remember, five rounds scheduled. Osuna needs to cut those corners to not allow Martinez to move around so fast. Oh, okay. He connected with that, that hand, Osuna. Martinez has showed Osuna a lot, Rodolfo, but Osuna has taken it. Uh, yes. You can't take it all day, but at some point, Martinez may be a little frustrated with the lack of impact he's seeing from his power strikes. I mean, physically, you see that Martinez just have that power over Osuna. Blocked, but still some impact. You can just hear it. Look what Martinez does. That's deep. He throws Osuna off like a couple of inches or so. I mean, it sets him back. Uppercut right under the chin of Osuna. And those teeps, Max, they're usually used to set up combinations. And, and if you know how to use them very well, it'll knock your ear out. And that's when you follow through and lay them out. See, now, now he's following it up or here's some body shots himself. Oh, Martinez. Oh, that's Osuna a little. Osuna blocked it. Textbook kickboxing right there. Osuna's done well in a defensive posture, but he has to be more of the aggressor. Martinez coming in from every angle. Oh. Left, right, changes sides, up route one. Those big power kicks right up the gut, into the gut of Osuna. And Osuna just can't find a gap so he can wrestle. He can't, because Martinez is so fast. And look, Max. Osuna switched the legs. He's working both legs now. Yep. Oh, oh another again. one. Ooh. Right on the ankle. Oh. My goodness. Oh! He's picking him apart. Upstairs, downstairs, there is nothing that oh. Aneri can't find. Osuna comes in and he pays a price. Here in the exchange. Yeah, Osuna needs to work that body when he gets that opportunity, but it needs to come in at close range. Martinez is always first with the striking. Look at that gap between them. 
Martin, that's where Martinez thrives on. Because they're going with those kicks. It's incredible a little for how good Osuna looked in those last two fights, but how he looks second best to the Black Spartan. The it's different reason, step in class. The reason why he has that gold, Max. Let's take a look at those stats. Decent output from Osuna. It's just right. remarkable output from Martinez. And it, the kicks is what makes the difference here. Oh! I felt that one. Not for the meek. Mixed martial arts, not at this level. Two absolute dynamos. Osuna goes to the body. More of that body work. Oh, he got clipped with that right hand. Just didn't come up with enough power because it was at close range. Aye. He got that left leg out of there. That one was uncomfortable. Less than 30 seconds to go round two. It's been all David Martinez. Upstairs again. Good way of Osuna asked that boxing. Keeping them hands up. Well, you can see a welt there on that left brow yep. from Osuna. From that right hand. He's got five rounds, so it's a little forgiving here for Osuna, but at some point, the tide needs to turn. It hasn't happened yet. Martinez clips him again right at the end of round two. Not real, a striking machine of the highest order. Speaking of the Black Spartan. Look at this right here, Max. This has been Black Spartan all day. Those front kicks, the side kicks. He good for that question mark, or actually more of like a, yeah, it more wasn't like an axe question kick. Yeah. It was more like an axe kick that was caught by Osuna. And then more of those teeps and just non-stop punches, hard heavy. But Osuna, don't count him out yet. He is trying to get some shots to the body. We are back here at round three. Round three of potentially five. Osuna has absorbed the pressure. He's taken hits all over his body. Both legs have been under siege, but he's there, he's still fighting. Now trying to be first in the interchange. Different type of Osuna between rounds. Usually you see him, you know, so motivated and he feels like he has it to fight in the pocket, but not, that's not the story here. Not the same case here, Max. Underhooks for the first time. We really see these guys get into tighter quarters. Glad you could join us. Uh, the first title defense for Davi Martinez so far going well. Max Pretos Rodolfo Roman bringing you all the images, the action, the sights, the sounds from inside the Jaula. We're just about four minutes to get into the title rounds, Max. There's a single leg. There it is, but let's see what oh boy. that defense from Martinez. Everything comes with a price tag. Man. <laughs> I don't think he wants to check his fecal score after that one. Yeah, no, nobody <laughs> rides for free. Osuna staying aggressive. Both rounds going Martinez's way. Yeah, he's just powerful with those legs again. That kickbox on the background, the teeps, the low kicks, the calf kicks. He's not putting a lot of pressure on that right leg now. It's getting tender. Osuna needs to keep, well, needs to try to put more pressure, work the body, work the body. That's what's going to Oh, oh the Osuna kick to Martinez! Him. Oh, Osuna my dropped goodness. him! Hit him right oh. on the button! And Martinez, look, you saw his eyes? They weren't there, he's not 100% there. Osuna oh. waited for his spot and it came. Now he's locked in, looking for the back. This is where Osuna can really this is, yep. express this, himself. This is where it could be, Max. He's getting oh. under the chin. The tide has turned. Osuna was patient. It's paid off. Martinez wriggles away, though. All right, Martinez, though. Well, watch out for the heel hook. Osuna very composed. Well, they're really tangled in there, and Osuna's got him locked in. Yeah, but Martinez trying to get the mount. Trying to get 
some positioning where he can land some shots. Osuna doesn't want to let go of this. He but, wants to capitalize on this, but not much going on here. But still, I mean, Osuna's bend over backwards. That foot is caught in there. It's yeah. not a comfortable position. It hurts the heck out of your calf yeah, in that and position. And it's etched on the face of Martinez. He gets out, Osuna grabs that leg again. More like a calf slicer. Massive kick to the brow that dropped Martinez. Oh, and right, down. right now, Osuna is taking advantage. He might wrap around those legs, that body lock, and now he has a chance for a rear naked choke. Let's really, he's gonna test out Martinez as he said he has some ground games and ground oh, defense. Boy, he may be out. in trouble, Max. We may have a new champion. Osuna has three submission victories in his five professional bouts. What a this comeback. This is his bag. Wow. Remember, five rounds. Martinez has to survive, and he'll get another chance to get into a stand-up position. Another rear naked choke attempt. The energy level is not the same anymore here for Martinez when it gets to the floor. It was that kick. And look at Martinez's face. And I think Martinez Rodolfo is now feeling, we're dealing with a, a, a fitness warrior here. This guy has got an incredible tank. What do I do? Incredible stuff here for Martinez as he looked up. Seems like he looked at the clock to see how much time he has so he can compose himself and gain some energy. Osuna having the advantage in this round, Another taking drop. him down. Uh, a better snake. That one, he's got that left arm underneath there. He's got a better, well, it's off the, it's off the neck. Yeah, it'd be best for Osuna to finish off this fight right now, not go to the championship round, because we don't know if Martinez might be able to get that same energy back in that fourth round. But it, Martin, and fifth. we're learning things about Martinez. How right. is his submission defending? It's good, it's not great. He's better when you're facing his opponent and in a striking battle. He has kept Osuna at bay by and large, but when Osuna finally made contact, he was able to take it to the ground. Well, Osuna, now, he, now Martinez had the takedown. Scooping him up, and then another oh, takedown Osuna. from Osuna. And now he's following through. Oh, oh it's on, baby! Championship rounds! Yes, sir! It's on! Are you not entertained? <laughs> the script has a rewrite. Axel Osuna is back and back with a vengeance. Woo wee! Fourth round. Here we go. Let's take a look at this action. Osuna attempting to take down. Martinez says, no, not today. But in just a few, you're going to see what made the change in this fight was that kick right to the chin and the button, bringing down Martinez. Tempted here, some action, but Osuna just wrapped around, had the majority of the control in that third round. And we are now in the championship round, the fourth for both of these men for the strap. And Martinez knows that this is a different fight for him. Osuna got his breakthrough. We believe he's won that third round. We'll find out shortly. And more than anything, David Martinez, where everything's come his way, all of a sudden, he has got something to work on. Well, let's see. Does Martinez keep that same pace? That kick just changed everything for Martinez. Martinez, you gotta take your hat off to him, how he was able to survive the third round. Osuna misses, not by much, though. Look, he's not moving around as much, Max. Osuna does feel a bit more confident here. He's gonna go back to those calf kicks, which was working for him. It's amazing how much Osuna has taken with those calf kicks, and we've seen it in the fights. You almost have to eat those as much as you can. It hurts, but it, it, it helps you diminish your opponent. If he sees that those things aren't having the impact that they thought he would like, they get frustrated. And right now, that, that whole idle moment right there, it, it's, it, it's good for Martinez. He's able to gain that energy back. Confirm Osuna wins the third round. This right. is round four, championship rounds. Really rarefied Man. air for Combate Global. Now Osuna needs to kick, check those kicks or move that leg back every time he sees those kicks coming. I mean, he's, he's been telling you, he's been showing it. You can see him from a mile away. Either you close the range, you cut the corners, or check them. 
Osuna's looking really good now. I mean, if you could take with a grain of salt the abuse he's taken, he looks fantastic. He has taken a lot of shots. And now Slips let's in. see. Yeah, let's, leg. let's see if he has that energy to defend and take down from Osuna. You know, Osuna is a remarkable a trip. ground tactician. There it is. Now Osuna has. By the way, we just want to remind it. you that both these guys are studying. Martinez is studying <laughs> to be a surgeon, and Osuna is studying to be a lawyer. Just to tell you the level of personalities that we have in there. These are two remarkable young men. Martinez now with his attempt at a takedown. And you see, I, I wouldn't doubt that Asuna allowed that takedown so he can go ahead and have that control there. He's like, well, if I'm not going to be able to do it, let him do it, and I'll take advantage of it. Osuna, who had a loss 2021, uh, that's where he lost to Junior Cortez, had a finger injury that kept him out of the year. He was hit by a driver who was not paying attention while he was on the phone in, in uh, Guadalajara. Uh, and in 2022, he was healthy, and he's got the two victories. And could he make it three for three? End of the Bantamweight title. Right, let's see here. This is for Osuna. Now, if Martinez gets that mount, Could be a different story. You gotta think about it tactically as well because now you have to think about the thought that this could go the distance. You're in the fourth round. And the way it's looking, it, 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 it more than likely will go to that fifth. Yeah, we're already two minutes remaining in round four. Martinez showing what he can do on the ground into the guard of Osuna. And right now he has control. He's the one on top. But oh, he's losing his shorts. Oh, no. <laughs> well, you Never don't see that one here. No, that's the first, that's awesome. the first for me, but what an assist. <laughs> and Osuna allowed it. Brian Miner coming through. He hey, appreciated it. You know, sure, but hey, listen. In MMA, you always protect yourself. I mean, Osuna was a kind person to let that, that well, I loved how uh, <laughs> Martinez pointed. Oh. Osuna. Loving yeah. shots. Osuna was just looking to grab one of those arms. And he was connecting. Martinez was landing those elbows and forearms. It was the first time we've seen Martinez with the high ground offensively on the ground. But Osuna, he could be like a pretzel, legs and arms going all different directions. Well, there's no doubt. And, and, and the, the resume that you see in Martinez, this is the time that he's really been tested. Osuna covers up, waiting for a window of opportunity. Maybe an arm bar, but Martinez giving him nothing. More clubbing. Right, Osuna, Osuna, Osuna can't may get be up. in trouble here. Oh, oh that might be in trouble to stop stopped him. David Martinez wow. retains the title. He was challenged in round three, only to come out in round four, hell bent for leather. El Campeon, the Black Spartan. I'm the champion, he Woo! said. Wow, good stuff. So much energy for Axel Osuna to get back in this fight. He did. He had Martinez on the ropes. Martinez, though, came in, and the class shone through. He caught him. TKO stoppage. And much respect for Osuna. Again, I, I, he's the guy that, that really challenged Martinez. But and it was that gave kick. up so much energy to get in that position. Right. And that's what I was saying. If Osuna wanted to take that victory, he had to do it in that third round because that's how he got him on the floor. He had all, he had everything to take. Fantastic stuff. It exceeded expectations, but still, campeón, Davi Martinez. We are back. Davi Martinez will retain his Bantamweight title. He finally wore out Axel Osuna to the official decision and Lupe Contreras. El referee Brian Miner detiene la contienda con un tiempo oficial de 4 minutos, 14 segundos del cuarto episodio. Referee Brian Miner steps in and calls a halt to this contest with an official time of 4 minutes, 14 seconds of round number 4. Your winner, by way of technical knockout, el ganador por knockout técnico. Still, Combate Global Bantamweight Champion.
the Black Spartan, David Martinez. The legend grows for the Black Spartan, successful in his first title defense. The question now, who will be next? And what's next for Axel Osuna? He had Martinez on the ropes in that third round. But I think, and you would know more than I would, Rodolfo, he exuded so much energy just to get back into this fight that in the fourth round, there was nothing left. Yeah. The difference has been were those kicks, calf kicks, the teep. He was consistent. Martinez just danced around, fast, fast, fast footwork. He was unstoppable. You couldn't stop this man. They were coming with so much power. And it was that one kick that changed it for Osuna right there in that third round that he should have capitalized. Of course, it's easier said than done. But if he wanted to win this title, it was right here that he had to do it. Then Martinez flipped it around. He took Osuna down, and you're right. He did take a lot, and I think he just didn't have enough energy to answer back to Martinez in the fourth round. He searched for submissions, but he just couldn't capture it. And again, the champion, David Martinez, retains his title. A superb talent, and so is Axel Osuna. But look at those numbers. The opening bell was rung, and Martinez was a striking zombie over and over. Got the kicks involved, did a lot of damage. I'm really impressed with Osuna Rodolfo, the way he fought back. He certainly made us think that he could do it. But the fourth round, Martinez came in and stamped his authority. You can't take anything away from Osuna. He came to fight. He challenged Martinez on paper. You know, when you look at these two, they were they were very similar at a point, but Osuna slightly had the edge because of that well-roundedness of the, of, the, of the wrestling and the ground game. But he's the one man that has really challenged Martinez when you look at it. So my hat off to him, looking forward to seeing Martinez once again defend that title. But great performance by this young man. Three Good takedowns stuff. by Martinez, 90% accuracy. It was a comprehensive performance for the champ. And we'll be back again next Friday. Get to see the uh, remarkable Moises Diaz and his first round and knockout prowess. Crazy knockout, man. It's one of the fastest here in Combate Global. Just seconds in and part of a, an exciting bout card from top to bottom. Don't have a world title fight, but you might have better fights throughout with what's coming up next week. Friday, check us out as we will get you ready. We never disappoint. We are out of time. On behalf of our entire production crew, Artie Izquierdo, Pablo Morales, Rodolfo Roman, my name is Max Pretos. We'll see you next Friday. Until then, Placido Domingo!